Eye-catching political ideas are the stuff of headlines, but are they serious policy initiatives or simply approval-seeking stunts? In other words, kite flying. In her first speech as Housing Minister, Caroline Flint has suggested commitment contracts, under which new council house tenants would have to agree to seek employment before they were given the keys. This follows an uncosted proposal from David Cameron to give every new mother a home nurse for the first week of her baby's life. Here's Jackie Long on the art of political kite flying. Up, up, and not necessarily away. Political kite flying can be a tricky business. Take the past few days. First on Sunday, it was the Tory leader with a plan to provide every new mother with a dedicated maternity nurse at home for six hours a day. Today, it's the Labour Minister, Caroline Flint, proposing that council tenants would have to actively seek work if they wanted to keep their home. Front page news both, but each easy prey to the accusation they're nothing more than political stunts. First up, Labour on the Tory maternity plan. Well, it's a typical Cameron con. They haven't even said how they would fund £350 million. I believe it's not going to all new mums. And what's going to happen to future benefits and payments to, to pregnant women? I'm very worried about this. I just think it's PR. It's, there's no substance to it. It's typical Cameron. It was certainly sort of headline-grabbing stuff, uh, which, when you think about it, cannot possibly work. And we know that in one or two years' time, we'll look back and ask the minister how this all went, and the whole thing would have been quietly forgotten about. It's the job of politicians to say their rivals' plans are uncosted, unworkable pie in the sky. But making the front pages is a far cry from making proper policy. Remember Tony Blair's plan to march Yobos to the cash point to pay on-the-spot fines? Where did that go? And what about Tory plans for a flat tax? put forward by the shadow Chancellor George Osborne back in 2005. This, says one former Tory kite flyer, a masterclass in the art. He said he was in favour of flat taxes, but if you listen carefully, he didn't commit himself. So he was able, over a period, to work out what people liked about flatter, simpler taxes, what people didn't like, and move towards an idea that people would like, leaving him with just a little flavour of flat tax. So he looked like a new ideas man, but he wasn't stuck with a big unpopular idea. A classic piece of kite flying. But if you don't get it right, kite flying in politics can cost you dearly. I think if you get a headline for an idea and you do it in a way which creates the view in the public that you're actually committed to that policy, it's going to come back and bite you. Because in a year's time, at, par at, at Prime Minister's questions, David Cameron's going to say to Gordon Brown, well, whatever happened to that idea about throwing people out of their council houses because they didn't have jobs? So if you're not very careful, then the public will get the wrong end of the stick and then that will cause you problems further down the line. I hope I've started a debate, no matter how provocative, because... A debate, perhaps, but will this policy from new housing minister Caroline Flint ever see council tenants who won't get a job lose their house. It is a big idea, a key part of good kite flying, but in government you're judged by what you deliver. Maybe that's why kite flying's a lot easier in opposition. What a master kite flyer Tony Blair proved to be between 1995 and 1997. Over and over again they said, we're going to have Frank Field-style welfare reform. When it came to it, they even appointed Frank Field to the government as sort of minister of kite flying. But did they do any of it? No, they didn't. They got the credit for being this new thinking, uh, we'll do anything that works government, but they didn't actually implement anything. So you can see that was kite flying at its best and at its worst. Provocative policy ideas that are never likely to make it onto the statute books may still grab headlines, but they can also erode public trust. Perhaps politicians should keep their ideas a little closer to the ground. <laughs>